Prayer is everything that you need. Hallelujah. 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 I love prayer. I love prayer. Did you hear the testimony Lori gave us? I didn't just come. Those things don't just happen. These are miracles that God can do. I'll tell you how to get your own miracle today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People don't love coming for prayer. Do you know why people don't like to come for prayer? Because they've been fasting and praying and they think, I didn't get my response. God never answered me. So people kind of get tired because they think God did not respond to their prayers. But I want to talk to you today. I will start by saying, yes is an answer. People, they just hear yes. When they ask God, they hear God saying yes because something has happened. They don't even hear him saying it. They assume God said yes because it happened. It's because your ear is not hearing the voice. <laughs> no is also an answer, an O. How many people allow God to say no? <laughs> How many people hear God in their ears saying no, and O? It's an answer as well. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's an answer as well. No is an answer from God. He also says no. Sometimes he also says wait. Wait. When he says wait, do you hear his voice? But the Bible says my sheep, my sheep, my sheep, my sheep, my sheep, hear my voice. They will not listen to the voice of a stranger. They will not follow the voice of a Do you hear his voice? The reason why we don't like to pray is because we can't hear him. We cannot hear, yet he's talking so loudly. He makes so much noise. Sometimes you are praying, you are sitting, you are kneeling here, and you are praying earnestly. Lord, come through. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray. Lord, hear me. And you are crying. And then he says, shut up, my daughter. Let me talk to you. Just shut your mouth. I heard you. Shut your mouth. Lord, come through. Lord, come. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Where are you? God says, I'm here, honey. I'm here, sweetie. Calm down. I'm here. Just shut your mouth. I want to talk to Jehovah. Je ah! 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 He says, calm down. It's okay. I'm here, honey. I want to talk to you. Amen. Come back, come back. I haven't spoken to you. Come, honey. Come, just come back. You are gone. Sometimes he follow you in your car. Hey, I just want to talk to you. I want to tell you. I want to respond to your prayer. Do, 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 do. Beyonce, Rihanna, do, 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 do. And she's like, lost cause. God wants to speak to us. How can you have a conversation by yourself every day? Every day you are praying. Every day you wake up in the morning. Father, I am moving. Father God, I'm going to work. Come through for me now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He's trying to say, no, 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 no. Wait in my presence. There is danger at work today. I want to talk to you. Don't use the same road that you use. But your ear cannot hear because you have not taught your spirit to hear the voice of God. So you think God doesn't answer prayers. He does. 
every day when you kneel, he does. Prayer is a conversation between two people. Do you understand? You are not speaking to the wind. You are not speaking to the wall. You are speaking to a real God who answer prayers. But the question is, do you hear his voice when he speaks? Are you, after praying, are you patient to listen? Do you take your time? You know, we try a few minutes here after praise and worship. We try to be calm, to try and calm our minds. You know, when people are in church, sometimes we pastors, we know. You think everybody's here. Someone is, Mark is back in Africa whilst he's sitting here. His body is here, but his mind is in Africa. He's thinking, oh, I left that. Um, how is that one working? You know, you are back home. Someone is in the bank. Right now I'm talking to you. Did that check go through? Did I write the right amount? Is it going to be uh, uh, cleared? Uh, is there enough funds? And someone is working math right now. I do took a Walmart yesterday. I bought that jacket. I removed the ten. So, and the pastor is busy preaching here. Prayer is connection between God and man. Amen. Prayer is a communication process that allows us to talk to God. It's a communication process that allows you to communicate with God. You're not talking to yourself. That's why a lot of people, when we say pray, they're like, mm, 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 because they don't think they're talking to anybody. They don't even think that in their minds. They don't even imagine that they're talking to anyone. So they would rather go, mm, someone would just keep quiet. Prayer stimulates God to act on your behalf. When you come to him in prayer, I tell people who say, because sometimes, you know, when we are used to do these warfare, sometimes you think it's all about warfare, fighting and fighting. It's not all about that. Because if you don't know, you end up binding God. <laughs> One time I was praying for a visa for someone. And I prayed <laughs> with my husband. We went on a fast for seven days and seven nights. And then we were, <laughs> we were in the house every night. You know, our time with Africa is different, right? So we were praying for a visa. We wanted her to come. So we, we say to her, when you are going, just uh, text us a message, and we're going to be on the altar whilst you go into the visa. So for seven days, we were, time that she will be leaving, we will take myself and my husband and my kids, we are on the altar, we are binding every generational case. We are binding every demon that we knew. We were doing warfare with everybody that we knew. And then we were surprised. <sighs> they said denied visa again for the fourth time. And whilst I was lying there, <laughs> wondering, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, who are you binding? Who are you binding? Even in warfare, you need to understand, to listen. When you are doing spiritual warfare, listen, open to 1 Corinthians. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. I want you to understand that we are jewel. We are jewel. We have duality rights on this earth. We are here as bodies and spirits. Amen? Amen? 1 Corinthians 6, verse 17, let's go. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Everybody, that's your opportunity to read the Bible. So I want everybody to read. Can you look for the uh, version that says whoever is joined? With joined. I want the word that says whoever is joined with the Lord is one with him in what? It means your spirit is joined to what? To God. Amen? Your spirit is what? Unto the what? God. Unto uh -huh, the, Lord. To the law, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go. But, but he, he that, that is, is joined, joined unto, unto the, the Lord, Lord is one. 
Come on, say it is one. One spirit. It's one. One spirit. Your flesh is not the one that pray. If you don't know how to join your spirit with spirit of God, you will struggle to pray. Because flesh cannot connect with God. Flesh, body, right? Your spirit lives in the what? In the body, right? This house made with clay that dies and go back to the dust. This will tell you don't pray because it has no idea what you have to do. It's only the one, the man, the image of God in you. The one created by God is spirit. That's why we call him spirit man. He's the one who lives inside of you. He's the one who prays, not your physical body. This is why when we pray, you got to make sure your spirit is connected. Not the vocabulary doesn't work. You will make all the noise you want, but you see no change. Because your spirit man is not connected to your prayer. So you are the one talking, but the spirit is disconnected. Prayer is the resource of God's children. Prayer is the resource Whatever you need in life, you are spirit. You are one with God. It means when he created the earth, he gave you dominion. Dominion is not just talking physically. That's why God does not respond. Because it's your spirit that must operate in dominion before it manifests in the physical Amen. Amen. The discipline is making sure your spirit is connected with God. When your spirit is connected, you see, our spirit is powerful. When we sleep, when this tired body, the flesh, when it goes to sleep, your spirit does not sleep. Amen. Listen to me. Your spirit will not what? Your spirit will never sleep. When you are sleeping, your spirit is busy, busy making transactions. Oh, I dreamt eating flesh. You, you know you're not eating. You are not just a witch. Your spirit was manipulated. The Bible says, well, man slept. A believer must not sleep. A believer must be awake. The spirit of slumber must live your life because the Bible says, whilst men sleep, the enemy came. And what did he do? He saw some tears. A believer must not sleep. When I mean sleep, I mean your spirit must be awake. How do you empower your spirit? You empower your spirit by personal prayer in a secret place, not what we do here in public. That's not it. You don't feed your spirit just here in public. What we do, that's why there must be fire when we come here. Because MQ, you bring your own fire. Zaley, you bring your own fire from your altar, from your house. You bring your own fire. You know the time you spend in your secret place praying. When you come to church, we connect. There must be a big flame. Because prayer is what you do in your secret place. What we do in public, sometimes some of us is just to show off so that you know I can pray vocabulary, I got it. But listen to me, it's not about that, that's not prayer. Amen, 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 amen. Your spirit must be connected so that it benefits you in the physical. Prayer is the greatest gift God has made available to man. It's a gift prayer. Because you see, as a believer, there are people who have situations and they don't know what to do with them. They are calling left, right, and center. They are Googling left, right, and center. They are calling Africa. They are calling uh, Namibia. They are calling all over the world. They are calling for solutions. They are going to people, to doctors, and doctors are telling you this is not, this, this one can't be solved. It's a done deal. There's no hope. There's no hope for you. They'll tell you it's over. But prayer is a gift God has given you. When you are faced by a situation like that, 
As a believer who knows to pray, what do you do? You excuse yourself from everybody. Come on, everybody. You excuse yourself from your friends, from your common everything, your comfort zone. You leave everything. You go unto him. The Bible says in Hebrews 5 verse 7, Jesus in the days of his flesh, he went to him who could hear him. There is a God to answer. If there is a man or a woman to pray, there is a God to answer prayer. There is a God to answer prayer. Prayer is a gift we have been given by God. You see, you worry about what people say because you don't know how to pray. When people rule you out as a prayer warrior, you don't take what they say. You say, oh, are you sure? You said I can do it. Is that all you can tell me? You withdraw midnight hour, 12 midnight. Open door, open, open door, open. What are you doing? You are praying. Witches, they know what to do. Witches will tell you. Ah, that's what you did. You are looking at that which is like a nobody. It's like a nobody to you. The words they are saying don't mean anything. But at night they are flogging you. They are flogging you. Whilst you sleep, the whole man and this little girl is flogging you. Spirits. We are spirits. We are joined to God. The Bible says... Those who worship him must worship him in spirit. In spirit. In spirit. You see, people see you. They will classify you. You know, that's what people are good at. Huh? They classify us. They define who we are. We are told by others. You are this. But when you know that you are spirit... These bodies are simply homes or houses that we live in. We are not this flesh. This is dust. This is humus. This is dirty. It's going back to dirty. That's why it will tell you, don't pray, I'm tired. That's why this flesh will tell you, don't go to church, you are tired. It's not going anywhere. It's going down six feet back where it came from. But in you, they live a spirit. Inside of you, they live a spirit. Inside of you, live a spirit that says, I have to go back where I came from because I'm joined with God. If I'm found and wanting, I am going back to the lake of fire. Yes, because God owns the spirit. You don't own your spirit. He owns it. He does what he wants at the end with it. According to the way you have repaid him for giving you that spirit. Hallelujah. Prayer medium that con is what connects us. You are connected to God through prayer. When everyone is running around at work, when they say there's going to be a retrenchment, they are going to cut the stuff. As a believer, how do you react? It's only those who don't know how to pray who run around and call everybody. Oh, they say they're going to retrench. What criteria are they going to use? What are they going to do? Because you don't know the weapon you have. You are ignorant. You are ignorant. The Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. You'll be like everybody. Psalm 82 verse 6 says, You are gods. You are sons of the Most High. Do you not know that? In verse 7 it says, You will die like me, amen. If you don't know who you are, abuse is inevitable. The devil will abuse you left, right, and center. The devil will abuse you because you have no idea who you are. You don't even know what to do. What are your needs for? Ha! Ah, what are you? We, we fight from the place of advantage. Bridget, we don't just take yes or no for an answer. No, 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 no. A believer don't just accept a no as an answer. You don't do that. <laughs> I don't have time to give you testimonies. My life is a testimony of prayer because I don't pray, I don't play, I pray. 
Aha, uh -huh, not in church, in my altar, in my secret place. I pray. When you come here and you say it's not going to happen, I love it. Because all it does, it just energizes the spirit of prayer in me. And I got to bring you proof, right? I got to bring evidence that all things are possible with God. How do I materialize that word? Through prayer. You may confess, you may decree and declare. Oh, I decree and declare. I am the head and not the tail. Honey, you got to be in another realm for that head to come through. You need the presence. The word of God, before you read it, it's called Logos. Professors read the Bible as logos. We got people who know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. If they sit down to talk to you, they are professors. Their heads are big with knowledge of logos. But a believer, ah, a believer. You live with Rema. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You live with Rema. Rema is the confirmation of what is written in the Bible when it becomes a reality, when it manifests in the physical. That's your Rema. You walk in the Rema because the Bible says you shall lay hands upon the sick and they will recover. It's logos before Rema comes. It's just a word spoken in the Bible. But when I go into action with the power of the Holy Spirit in prayer, in the presence of my God, and I lay my hands upon the sick, it becomes Rema because it becomes alive and cancer will bow. I said, and cancer will bow. I'm not talking stories. I'm talking the journey. I have said, you see, I fight. I'm in, I'm in seminary. Don't underestimate me. I'm in seminary. I got professors, great professors, and we fight every day because they tell me that God, miracles have ceased. What do you call what God did for Lori? I said, what do you call what God did for Laureate? A miracle is something that you cannot explain how it happened. Only God can do it. But it comes through prayer. Knowing God personally through prayer. We can change lives around. We can turn our situations around. When we connect ourselves with God, knowing that you are more than just a body, you are spirit. The body worries. The spirit, let's say, connect me to the Father, and I will show you the mightiness of the Father. You see, the body. Ah. You know, prayer changes things. Jabez, I'm not going to open too many scriptures because of my time. Jabez prayed. When Jabez prayed, prayed to God, one thing that happened is that his story was rewritten. Listen, he did not go to people. Our problem is when we have problems, we need to go to people. You call your auntie, you call your mother. Here yeah, you've been diagnosed with a problem. You begin shaking. <laughs> How many times I was diagnosed with cancer on the breast 10 years ago when I came here. Oh, we saw something. We saw a lump on your breast. I laughed. I am not laughing because I'm stupid. I know who is behind my laugh. I 
laughed. I was not just laughing. If a witch tell you you see and you laugh, you see for sure. You will not sleep. They will kill you witches. Which power are you confident of? When you say I will do it, where are you basing that confidence? Where are you basing it from? Oh, we'll call you shortly. Because we, we, if everything is okay, you, we won't call you. I get home immediately. Phone comes in. Grrr, I'm like, what? They're like, you have to come back. We saw a lamp in your breast. I'm here with my breast, two of them. I have no cancer. I went back there and I was laughing because I knew the power in me greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You put too much play, uh, trust in your job. That's the problem. You put too much trust in your connections. You want to work things for yourself. That is the problem. We try to make it work by ourselves. We use our might and power to bring our testimony. It doesn't work like that. God does not need your help. Come on, somebody. God does not need your help to help you. He doesn't need your help. He wants you to come as helpless as you are to him in prayer. Spend time in prayer. Spend time to, with him. Talk to him. But when you begin to help God, he's watching you. He's like, no, that's not my style, honey. That's not how I do it. That's not how God do it. Go to him in prayer. For him to say, go. <laughs> Listen to me. There is nothing as stupid as an army, the whole army being faced with enemies to destroy them. The whole nation of Israel was faced with an army that was ready to destroy them. What did they do? They went in prayer. Come on, somebody, listen to me. They went in prayer. They said, oh God, who brought our fathers? God has a history. So when you go in prayer, you are checking God's resume. Do you understand? You are looking at God's resume. And you are checking God's resume, what he has done in the past. And you begin to say, I know you have done it in the past. It's not the first time I'm faced with this situation. But I saw you coming through for those people. I choose to trust you because that's prayer. That's prayer, right? I choose to trust you because if you did it for them, you're going to do it for me as well. Now God speaks to the children of Israel. He said, you don't need guns like them. You don't need weapons like them. You don't need all those things like them. All you need, you need worship. Singing a song going to war. Have you ever seen an army in America that goes to war with a song? Tell me today, have you ever seen an army that goes to war with a song? He will give you a song to sing in the presence, in the midst of your storm. God gives you a song to sing. God gives you a song to sing in prayer. There are times when you go in prayer and God will tell you, don't cry, my daughter. Don't do warfare, my daughter. I want you to dance. Hey! Hey! He's able. You begin to sing. What a mighty God I serve. What a mighty. What a might, what a might, what a mighty God I serve. It's time for prayer. You are supposing to be fight. Hey, I bind you, I bind you, I bind you, I bind you. And the Lord said, don't bind, I've already bound. Give me glory, give me worship. Give me honor, give me worship. Prayer will help you to change life. Prayer blesses you. It brings favor to follow you. A lot of people have had breakthroughs. You see, when something, a miracle happens to you once, we call it a breakthrough. We don't call it favor. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I say it when a breakthrough comes. When a miracle happens once in your life, we call that a breakthrough. 
Let me tell you what favor looks like. Today, you go in that place, and then the door opens. You don't expect it. On Wednesday, you go in that place, a door opens. You didn't pray for it. Tomorrow, Saturday, you go in that place. You didn't know about it. The door opens. We call that favor. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. Favor. You see, when you pray, what do you do? You attract more of God. You smell God. Ah, da, 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 da. You smell God. You smell the presence of God. So you relax in the presence of God. Because you know when time comes, you see what happens when you pray. When you pray, you start by talking. Talking words, talking words. But listen, you come to a time in your prayer that you don't talk words anymore. But your spirit begins to pray. Ah, ah, I said your spirit man rises and he's the one who begins to talk to God. That's what you need. That's why we speak in tongues. We speak in tongues because we don't understand some of the battles ahead of us. Your human mind does not understand that. Since we are joined with spirit, there is a code for Christians. Military has a code. You understand what I'm saying? Witches have got codes. Believers, we also have a code. The Holy Spirit, when he fills you, he gives you a gift called speaking in tongues. You need that gift. What do you need it for? You need it for prayer. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is going to wake you up in the midst of the night at 1 a.m. You don't know why he's telling you to pray. You don't even know what to pray for. What do you do? You engage in tongues. You begin to pray. And then a name will come up in your mind. I always give you a testimony of my cousin about to wait on a Saturday morning in England and I'm here in America and the Holy Spirit wakes me up in the midst of the night and he say pray for them. Pray. I didn't know I was praying for her initially. I just started praying in tongues. Whilst I was praying in tongues, the Holy Spirit gave me a name. I began to cover your wedding. I began to speak uh, blessings. I began to bind every spirit that may interfere with that wedding. When I was done, I went back to sleep. Three hours later, a phone call comes. All the way from England, you cannot believe this. I'm like, what? What happened? He said, the bride and her mom... We're going to the saloon to have your final hair done so that she can put a what? A crown on the head. The car she was in and another car comes head on like this. It was like, the way they explained it, it was like someone put a hand between the two cars. They literally kissed. I tell you, don't ever despise a person who knows how to kneel and pray to God. Don't ever. You see, you may look like a weakling. People may look you. You may not have anything today. Listen to me. People may look at you. You may not have anything that is powerful or anything. But when you know how to kneel and pray before God, relax. 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 Because God is going to come through for you. There are so many aspects of prayer. Sometimes we just know one type of prayer warfare. That's not all. That's not all. Amen. Yes, there are warfare prayers that we do. That's not enough. We also have uh, people who, who do what you call gentlemen and women prayer. And you know what it means? Gentlemen and women's prayer. You know what that means? Hmm? You know what it means? We are praying here. They are doing ladies and gentlemen. Yes, devil go. Devil, I command you to go. Leave me. Leave me in the name of Jesus. Go. 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 Just leave me. Go. No. No. That gentleman women's prayer is not going to cause the devil to be afraid of you. Remember how aggressive the Bible actually calls him. A ro he's like a roaring lion. And you want to go. 
Hey, God. Yeah, and they're eating muffin and a cup of coffee on the other side. I command you to go, go. I command you to go, devil, go. When we engage in warfare, we are like Moses, Aaron, and Huri. What they were doing in the physical is what was happening in the realm of the spirits. So when we engage in spiritual warfare, the battle is on. The battle is what? It's on. The devil knows when you wake up in the morning, I'm in trouble. Don't do lazy prayers when you know the situation is not okay. And you all wake up just for five minutes. The Holy Spirit will walk you up to get it until you get it. And you're praying, oh God, come uh, in the name of Jesus. By the time you wake up, it's six o'clock. You have been on your knees from one o'clock sleeping and snoring. Lazy prayers. Sometimes we do very long prayers, but because you are not targeted. You understand what I'm saying? You are not targeted. You are like someone with a weapon who is shooting in darkness. You are just shooting. Put on the light, the word of God. It will help you and direct you to target your enemy. Don't waste your time doing long prayers and targeted. Target the enemy. Know how to pray. Put on the light. The light is the word in the Holy Spirit. He will direct you. That's why we speak in tongues. So that the light is switched on. The bulb is turned on when we speak in tongues. And then there are some well, short prayers like eating dinner. Father, I thank you. I thank you today. I'm going to work. Be with me. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> My brother, do you know this world? The enemy is after you. The enemy is after you. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. What you see manifesting in the physical, it starts in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. Then there are satanic prayers. Satanic prayers that you fight Piola, your sister whom you are seeing. It's not Piola who is doing it. We see the spirit behind Piola. The Bible says we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and, 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 and what else? Ah, you see, don't even know the light. The word of God is the light that helps you to pray. You need to know the word. That's the light. That is the light. The word of God will give you prayer points. Not your mind. Amen. You need to pray with understanding. Your understanding will come from the word of God. So the prayers of mind will not help you much. I want you to open my last scripture maybe. I want you to understand what Jesus says here. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew 21. Matthew 21 verses 10 to 14. Matthew 21, verses 10 to 14. I hope somebody is taking this seriously. If you really want a breakthrough, you will not pray, play with such a message because you need to move to the next level. Prayer convention is coming. We want results because God answers prayers. And I'm showing you how to connect your spirit so that when you come for these prayers, you got to get results. You are delaying yourself by lack of knowledge and understanding. But now this is the knowledge the word of God gives you. Hallelujah. Let's read from verse 10 to 14. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. In my conclusion, I want to conclude with this scripture. Who is the house of God? Mm. Who 
is the house of God? Is it a church? I said, who is the house of God? Lama, who is the house of God? Can I say, say it loudly? You are a house of God. Church is a meeting place. The Bible says, do you not know that your bodies are what? Oh, you need to know your Bible. You need to know. Your, this is why sickness and all those things can just attack you. And you just say, oh, the will of God. And doctors tell you it's incurable. Because you don't know that your body is not yours. Inside your body, the Bible says, if you receive me, I, the Father, and Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, we will come. And what do we want? We will reside in your body, Lama. Your body is no longer yours. That's why Paul says, it is no longer I that lives, but Christ lives in me. When you are walking, it's not you alone. That's why you are always afraid, because you think you are alone. God the Father is in you. Jesus, the Son of God, is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. The whole heaven is in you. But you are still afraid of COVID. <laughs> COVID. <laughs> you deny it access. You speak with confidence. You say you don't belong to this body. It's not yours. It belongs to Jesus. Your body is the house of God. Now Jesus says it is written that my house shall be called a house of prayer. Your body shall be called a house of prayer. Not the church. Your body, be, do you hear me, Bridget? Your body shall be called a house of prayers, not a den of things or robbers. <laughs> Your house, a house of prayer. But you are allowing thieves and robbers to come and take. They'll come and exchange. They were exchanging money, right? In the temple, in your body, they exchange your destiny. Ah, they are thieves. They will stand your blessing. And they will exchange with a kiss. They will exchange your health with sickness and infirmity. Robbers who exchange. Whilst men slept, the enemy came. As I end this prayer, your house is your body. It must be a house of prayer. Not a den of thieves and robbers. What has been stolen in your life? What has been stolen by the devil? Because you are slumbering. You allow your house to be called. There is a scripture in the book of Acts. Because of time, I will not read it. But I want you to read when you go home. It was Acts chapter 28, verse 1 to 3. Once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. Verse 2. The islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all. Because it was raining and cold, Paul gathered a pile of brushwood. That is to put some fire, right? As he put it on the fire, a viper driven out by heat, a viper, a snake was driven out by heat. It was not driven by cold. It was in the, in the, in the brushes, in the wood, because it was cold. It fastened on his end. How many things are fastened in your life because you are cold spiritually? You are cold. How many things say I will not let you go because you are cold? You need the fire. You get the fire in prayer. You need to pray with fire. You need the fire in prayer so that you can chase demons out. Demons stay in you because you're cold. You allow demons to stay in you because you are cold. When you pray, Father, 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 in Jesus' name, Amen. You are cold. 
You cannot push them. Don't tell me that you can change what has happened with your ancestors for, for 800 years. It is happening in your family. And you, the youngest, you tell me you can change with that cold kind of prayer. You are lying to me. You are lying. There's a cycle in your family. Everyone dies with cancer. Your grandma died with cancer. His grandmother died with cancer. Your mother died with cancer. Your first sister died with cancer. Everyone, and you know, you are going to die with cancer at the age of 40. And you're like, oh, in the name of Jesus, may the will of God be done. You need fire. You need fire to put to a stop that cycle. You need fire. To put that cycle to a prayer, to a stop. Everyone in your family, they marry and divorce. My mother divorced. My grandmother divorced. She died a widow. Everybody died a widow. Your grandmother died a widow. Your grand grandmother died a widow. And your mother died a widow. And your own mother, your father died when she was 29. Everybody's father, his husband dies. It's a cycle in your family. You are not going to overcome it by that lukewarmness in prayer. With that coldness in prayer. You need the fire of the Holy Spirit to jumpstart your prayer. Then you can stand against them. Let me tell you altars. In your family, in your village, they have been raised for years. I want you to stand up now. I want you to look in your family. What are those things they've been praying for for years? And you say we are just the same. I've been coming to church, I've been praying. But this situation is just the same. You have left the situation to fate. No. You don't take chances with life. Life is important. You were born here by God to make it in life. You were born to succeed. You are a success wherever you are. Remember the Bible says God has already finished the journey of your life. What we are doing is simply a replay. Are you here? Your life is simply the same. You can't see a rising in your spirit life. You know, there must be a difference where you started before you knew this power. And where you are now knowing how this power works. There's got to be a difference. Everybody died poor. There is a limit on your family. Every time you get there, somewhere there, everybody drops to zero again. An embargo and a limitation has been put on your family. Nobody gets married. You are all single. And you are just praying, Father, give me a husband. You got to wake up with fire. You got to tell those demons what you did with my aunties. It will not happen to me. What you did with my uncles. It will not repeat on me. I stand as an altar. I take authority. In the name of Jesus, I break the cycle. Come on, lift your voice. Begin to pray. Give me fire in my prayer life. Raise your hands to God. Ask for the spirit of prayer. Ask for the spirit of prayer. You need the spirit of prayer. Grace for prayer. Say, Lord, give me grace for prayer. I want to turn around my family story. My story in the family must be rewritten. My story must change. My life must turn around. My life must be healed. Restoration must happen. What the enemy take away from me, I need it back. You can take it through prayer. You can restore it through prayer. You can call it back through prayer. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the weapon. You got it. It's a power weapon. You got a power weapon. Pray. Come on, lift your voice. Say, restore me. Make me a prayer altar. Help me, God, to be a woman of prayer. I cannot watch my children go through everything and I'm just crying. I don't cry. I stand and pull my kids out. I pray for my children. I lift them in prayer. I snatch them out of the hand of the enemy. 
You watch your marriage go down the drain. You are just crying for nothing. You got to be a prayer warrior. You got to pray and break every spirit. You got to pray. You got to break it. You got to break the cycle. It ends here. No further will you go. No further will you go. It ends with me here right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. To those who are going to be baptized today, congratulations. Luke 3 verse 21 says, When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened. As Jesus did not just got baptized, he was praying whilst he was being baptized. Jesus was what? Was praying whilst he was being baptized. Heaven must open for you today. Life must change today. Any curse in your family must stop today. Any generational curse must stop today. This is your day. Pray whilst you are being baptized. Heaven opened for Jesus. A voice came from heaven. Declare, this is my beloved son. After this baptism, people must look at you and say, this is not the ordinary Zaili that I know. This cannot be the ordinary MQ that I know. This cannot be the ordinary events that I know. This cannot be the ordinary mind that I know. You got to change. Your life must turn around. Heaven must speak for you today. Congratulations to you. You are making a major decision today. Jesus praised. He prayed whilst he was being baptized. May the Holy Spirit rest upon you today. May the Lord open heavens and recognize you. As you get baptized today, may it be a new day for you. May it be a new beginning for you. May you start over your life. May you see great things in your life. May you answer your call today. May you know what God and plans he has for your life today. Jesus prayed when he was being baptized. What a blessing for you. Congratulations one more time. Father, I bless your people. We thank you for this day again to celebrate baptism. We say take your glory. Take your glory, Lord. We celebrate what you are doing. We celebrate what you have done. Father, we purify the waters at Medicine Lake. Holy Spirit, touch the water. Holy Spirit, sanctify the water. Holy Spirit, purify the water. And those who shall stand to baptize today, may they be equipped with your spirit and power. May your anointing come from heaven today and touch these lives. Thank you for each and everyone who is here. Prepare us for prayer, Lord. Prepare us for prayer, Lord. As we leave this place, not only our bodies can pray, but our spirits, our minds should be connected in prayer because we are spirit and we should begin to pray. I bless each and everyone in this place. Thank you for answering prayers. Every prayer played in this place, you hear it, oh God. Bless us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless you today. God bless you. Let's get uh, going quickly. If you don't have transportation.